There are two kinds of hair that you can work with in Poser. There is kind of a posed prop hair, and there is a strand hair. What we're going to look at in this movie is working with prop hair, and some of the more legacy or older characters, there's a lot of prop hair, but there's also quite a little bit of prop hair available for free in certain areas on the web that you can find, as well as that that you can download from Content Paradise. The newer poser characters actually have all strand-based hair, which is much more realistic. However, it's also highly resource-intensive, and we'll deal with that in an upcoming movie as well. Let's take a look at working with prop hair. I have got the Simon G2 character here, and I located some prop hair that I have on my system here that you may or may not have. It goes to a very, very early version of Poser. So like all props, you go ahead and just double-click or click on the Apply Library preset. It thinks about it for a second, and the prop hair comes in way off the character's head. Part of this for this particular prop is that it was designed for characters who were simply scaled a little bit smaller. However, since it is a prop, it's automatically linked to the character's head. So if we were to move the character, the hair would move with it. So of course we've got to get that set up first. And like working with the other props we have, the easiest way to do that is when your character is zeroed out, and then you can go ahead and move it around. Go ahead and grab body part. Oops, let's come down to props, hair. And then we use the same tactics that we've used before. We work with our Y translation. And this may or may not fit real well because it was actually designed for different geometry. I'll work with the Z and pull this forward. And that's a little bit high. I can lower it down, maybe move it back just a little bit. Got that real nice, well, newscaster helmet head look. Now, as we zoom in on our character a little bit, and I'll orbit around. I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key and then use my scroll wheel and orbit around instead of using the trackball. We can see that the front to back is pretty close, but this is where we can do some asymmetric scaling inside here. And that's something that needs to be done anytime you apply a hair set that is different or created for a different geometric character than one you're working with. So obviously for the X scale, that needs to come out just a little bit so we can get some sideburns in there. The front to back here, we need to go ahead and scale that. That's the Z scale, so I'll increase this just a little bit. Closer, not ideal. I'll go ahead and use the Y translation, bring this down on the head a little bit, and maybe relocate it backwards just a touch. Now, prop hair is great in the fact that it is quick, it's easy. You only see bad hair like this in Las Vegas. But the nice thing is, is when you've got characters that are set further back from the camera, it's a fantastic way to control resource application inside your poser program. If you've got a scene with 30 people in it, using strand-based hair will more than likely bring your computer system to its knees when you're working with it. So having prop-based hair, while it's not the best look for characters that are further away from a camera, it's an ideal solution, and you locate it on the character's body just like you do with any other prop, and then it's stuck on his head with bad glue until you're done with it. So that's prop hair. We'll deal with strand hair in an upcoming movie.